brought to you by wikivd.com. Narendra Modi Narendra Damodar Das Modi is an Indian politician who is the 14th and current Prime Minister of India in office since May 2014. He was the Chief Minister of Gujarat from 2001 to 2014 and is the Member of Parliament for Varanasi. Modi, a member of the Bharatiya Janata Party, is a Hindu nationalist and member of the right wing Rashtriya Swayams of Aksang. Born to a Gujarati family in Vadnagar, Modi helped his father sell tea as a child and later ran his own stall. He was introduced to the RSS at the age of eight, beginning a long association with the organization. He left home after graduating from school partly because of an arranged marriage which he rejected. Modi travelled around India for two years, and visited a number of religious centres. He returned to Gujarat and moved to Ahmedabad in 1969 or 1970. In 1971 he became a full-time worker for the RSS. During the state of emergency imposed across the country in 1975 Modi was forced to go into hiding. The RSS assigned him to the BJP in 1985, and he held several positions within the party hierarchy until 2001 rising to the rank of General Secretary. Modi was appointed Chief Minister of Gujarat in 2001 due to Keshabai Patel's failing health and poor public image following the earthquake in BHUJ. Modi was elected to the Legislative Assembly soon after. His administration has been considered complicit in the 2002 Gujarat riots or otherwise criticized for its handling of it although a court found no evidence to prosecute Modi. His policies as chief minister credited with encouraging economic growth have received praise. His administration has been criticized for failing to significantly improve health poverty and education indices in the state. Modi led the BJP in the 2014 general election, which gave the party a majority in the Lok Sabha the first time a single party had achieved this. Since 1984, Modi himself was elected to parliament from Varanasi. Since taking office, Modi's administration has tried to raise foreign direct investment in the Indian economy, increase spending on infrastructure and reduce spending on healthcare and social welfare programs. Modi has attempted to improve efficiency in the bureaucracy and centralize power through the abolition of the planning commission. He has begun a high-profile sanitation campaign and weakened or abolished environmental and labor laws. Credited with engineering a political realignment towards right-wing politics, Modi remains a figure of controversy domestically and internationally over his Hindu nationalist beliefs and his role during the 2002 Gujarat riots, cited as evidence of an exclusionary social agenda. Early life and education Narendra Modi was born on 17 September 1952 a family of grocers in Vadnagar Mesana district, Bombay state. He was the third of six children born to Damod Ardis Mulchand Modi and Hiraben Modi. Modi's family belonged to the Morganchi Teli community, which is categorized as another backward class by the Indian government. As a child, Modi helped his father sell tea at the Vadnagar railway station and later ran a tea stall with his brother near a bus terminus. Modi completed his higher secondary education in Vadnagar in 1967, where a teacher described him as an average student and a keen debater. With an interest in theatre, Modi had an early gift for rhetoric in debates and this was noted by his teachers and students. Modi preferred playing larger-than-life characters in theatrical productions, which has influenced his political image. When eight years old, Modi discovered the Rashtriya Swayams of Aksang and began attending its local shakas. 
there. Modi met Lakshman Araya and Amdar, popularly known as Vakal Saheb, who inducted him as a Balsway Arms of Vak for RSS and became his political mentor. While Modi was training with the RSS, he also met Vasant Gajendra Gadkar and Nathalal Jagda. Bharatiya Jana Sang leaders who were founding members of the BJP's Gujarat unit in 1980. Engaged while still a child to Jashoda Ben, a girl from a family who lived close by. Modi rejected the arranged marriage at the same time he graduated from high school. The resulting familial tensions contributed to his decision to leave home in 1967. Modi spent the ensuing two years traveling across northern and northeastern India, though few details of where he went have emerged. In interviews, Modi has described visiting Hindu ashrams founded by Swami Vivekananda, the Belua Math near Kolkata followed by the Advaita Ashrama in Almora and the Ramakrishna Mission in Rajkot. Modi remained only a short time at each. Since he lacked the required college education, Vivekananda has been described as a large influence in Modi's life. In the early summer of 1968, Modi reached the Bellure Math but was turned away after which Modi wandered through Calcutta, West Bengal and Assam stopping in Shiliguri and Guwahati. Modi then went to the Ramakrishna Ashram in Almora where he was again rejected before traveling back to Gujarat via Delhi and Rajasthan in 1968-69. Sometime in late 1969 or early 1970 Modi returned to Vadnagar for a brief visit before leaving again for Ahmedabad. There Modi lived with his uncle, working in the latter's canteen at the Gujarat State Road Transport Corporation. In Ahmedabad, Modi renewed his acquaintance with Anamdar who was based at the Hedge War Bhavan in the city. After the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971 he stopped working for his uncle and became a full-time Pratarak for the RSS working under Anamdar. Shortly before the war, Modi took part in a non-violent protest against the Indian government in New Delhi, for which he was arrested. This has been cited as a reason for Anamdar electing to mentor him. Many years later Modi would co-author a biography of Anamdar published in 2001. In 1978 Modi received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science from School of Open Learning at University of Delhi graduating with a third class. Five years later in 1982, he received a Master of Arts degree in Political Science from Gujarat University as an external distance learning student. Early political career In June 1975, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi declared a state of emergency in India which lasted until 1977. During this period known as the emergency many of her political opponents were jailed, and opposition groups were banned. Modi was appointed General Secretary of the Gujarat Lok Sangharsh Samiti and RSS Committee coordinating opposition to the emergency in Gujarat. Shortly afterwards the RSS was banned. Modi was forced to go underground in Gujarat and frequently travelled in disguise to avoid arrest. He became involved in printing pamphlets opposing the government sending them to Delhi and organizing demonstrations. Modi was also involved with creating a network of safe houses for individuals wanted by the government and in raising funds for political refugees and activists. During this period Modi wrote a book in Gujarati Sang Harshma Gujarat, describing events during the emergency. Among the people he met in this role was trade unionist and socialist activist George Fernandez as well as several other national political figures. In his travels during the emergency Modi was often forced to move in disguise, once dressing as a monk and once as a Sikh. Modi became an RSS Sambhag Pracharak in 1978, 
overseeing RSS activities in the areas of Surat and Vadodara, and in 1979 he went to work for the RSS in Delhi where he was put to work researching and writing the RSS's version of the history of the emergency. He returned to Gujarat a short while later and was assigned by the RSS to the BJP in 1985. In 1987 Modi helped organize the BJP's campaign in the Ahmedabad municipal election, which the BJP won comfortably. Modi's planning has been described as the reason for that result by biographers. After L.K. Advani became president of the BJP in 1986, the RSS decided to place its members in important positions within the BJP. Modi's work during the Ahmedabad election led to his selection for this role, and Modi was elected organizing secretary of the BJP's Gujarat unit later in 1987. Modi rose within the party and was named a member of the BJP's National Election Committee in 1990, helping organize L. K. Advani's 1990 Ram Rath Yatra in 1990 and Merli Mano, Hijoshi's 1991-92 Ekta Yatra. However, he took a brief break from politics in 1992, instead establishing a school in Ahmedabad, friction with Shankar Singh Vaghela, a BJP MP from Gujarat at the time also played a part in this decision. Modi returned to electoral politics in 1994 partly at the insistence of Advani and as a party secretary. Modi's electoral strategy was considered central to the BJP victory in the 1995 state assembly elections. In November of that year Modi was elected BJP national secretary and transferred to New Delhi where he assumed responsibility for party activities in Haryana and Hermachal Pradesh. The following year Shankarsen Vaghela, a prominent BJP leader from Gujarat, defected to the Indian National Congress after losing his parliamentary seat in the Lok Sabha elections. Modi on the selection committee for the 1998 assembly elections in Gujarat favored supporters of BJP leader Kesha Bhai Patel over those supporting Vaghela. To end factional division in the party, his strategy was credited as key to the BJP winning an overall majority in the 1998 elections and Modi was promoted to BJP General Secretary in May of that year, taking office. In 2001 Keshabai Patel's health was failing, and the BJP lost a few state assembly seats in by-elections. Allegations of abuse of power, corruption and poor administration were made and Patel's standing had been damaged by his administration's handling of the earthquake in BHUJ in 2001. The BJP national leadership sought a new candidate for the chief ministership and Modi, who had expressed misgivings about Patel's administration was chosen as a replacement. Although BJP leader L.K. Advani did not want to ostracize Patel, and was concerned about Modi's lack of experience in government Modi declined an offer to be Patel's deputy chief minister telling Advani and Atal Bihari Vajpayee that he was going to be fully responsible for Gujarat and not at all. On 3 October 2001 he replaced Patel as chief minister of Gujarat with the responsibility of preparing the BJP for the December 2002 elections. On 7 October 2001 Modi was administered the oath of office. On 24 February 2002, he entered the Gujarat state legislature by winning a by-election to the Rajkot II constituency defeating Ashwin Mehta of the Inc. by 14,728 votes, which enabled him to take office. 2002 Gujarat Riots on 27 February 2002 a train with several hundred passengers burned near Godra, 
killing approximately 60 people. The train carried a large number of Hindu pilgrims returning from Ayodhya after a religious ceremony at the site of the demolished Babri Masjid. In making a public statement after the incident, Modi said that the attack had been terror attack planned by local Muslims. The next day, the Vishwa Hindu Parishad called for a band across the state. Riots began during the band, and anti-Muslim violence spread through Gujarat. The government's decision to move the bodies of the train victims from Gujarat to Ahmedabad further inflamed the violence. The state government stated later that 790 Muslims and 254 Hindus were killed. Independent sources put the death toll at over 2,000. Approximately 150,000 people were driven to refugee camps. Numerous women and children were among the victims. The violence included mass rapes and mutilations of women. The government of Gujarat itself is generally considered by scholars to have been complicit in the riots and has otherwise received heavy criticism for its handling of the situation. Several scholars have described the violence as a pogrom, while others have called it an example of state terrorism. Summarizing academic views on the subject Martha Nussbaum said, there is by now a broad consensus that the Gujarat violence was a form of ethnic cleansing, that in many ways it was premeditated and that it was carried out with the complicity of the state government and officers of the law. The Modi government imposed a curfew in 26 major cities issued shoots at site orders and called for the army to patrol the streets but was unable to prevent the violence from escalating. The president of the state unit of the BJP expressed support for the band, despite such actions being illegal at the time. State officials later prevented riot victims from leaving the refugee camps and the camps were often unable to meet the needs of those living there. Muslim victims of the riots were subject to further discrimination when the state government announced that compensation for Muslim victims would be half of that offered to Hindus. Although this decision was later reversed after the issue was taken to court. During the riots, police officers often did not intervene in situations where they were able. In 2012 Maya Kodnani, a minister in Modi's government from 2007 to 2009, was convicted of participation in the Naroda Patia massacre during the 2002 riots. Although Modi's government had announced that it would seek the death penalty for Kodnani on appeal, it reversed its decision in 2013. Modi's personal involvement in the 2002 events has continued to be debated. During the riots Modi said that what is happening is a chain of action and reaction. Later in 2002, Modi said the way in which he had handled the media was his only regret regarding the episode. Modi has not offered an apology for the riots. In March 2008, the Supreme Court reopened several cases related to the 2002 riots, including that of the Gulbarg Society massacre and established a special investigation team to look into the issue. In response to a petition from Zakir Jaffrey, in April 2009 the court also asked the SIT to investigate the issue of Modi's complicity in the killings. The SIT questioned Modi in March 2010. In May it presented to the court a report finding no evidence against him. In July 2011, the court appointed Amicus Curie Rayu Ramachandran submitted his final report to the court. Contrary to the SIT's position, he said that Modi could be prosecuted based on the available evidence. The Supreme Court gave the matter to the magistrate's court. The SIT examined Ramachandran's report, and in March 2012 submitted its final report asking for the case to be closed.
Zakir Jaffrey filed a protest petition in response. In December 2013 the magistrate's court rejected the protest petition, accepting the SIT's finding that there was no evidence against the chief minister. 2002 election In the aftermath of the violence there were widespread calls for Modi to resign as chief minister from within and outside the state including from leaders of the Dravida Manetra Kazagam and the Telugu Desam party. An opposition party stalled parliament over the issue. Modi submitted his resignation. At the April 2002 BJP National Executive meeting in Goa but it was not accepted. His cabinet had an emergency meeting on 19 July 2002 after which it offered its resignation to the Gujarat governor S.S. Bandari and the state assembly was dissolved. Despite opposition from the election commissioner who said that a number of voters were still displaced, Modi succeeded in advancing the election to December 2002. In the elections, the BJP won 127 seats in the 182-member assembly. Although Modi later denied it, he made significant use of anti-Muslim rhetoric during his campaign and the BJP profited from religious polarization among the voters. Modi hired the public relations firm APCO Worldwide to manage his image. He won the Maninagar constituency receiving 113,589 of 154,981 votes and defeating in candidate Yatanoza by 75,333 votes. On the 22nd of December 2002 Bandari swore Modi in for a second term. Modi framed the criticism of his government for human rights violations as an attack upon Gujarati pride a strategy which led to the BJP winning two-thirds of the seats in the state assembly second term. During Moda's second term the rhetoric of the government shifted from Hindutva to Gujarat's economic development. Modi curtailed the influence of Sangh Parivar organizations such as the Bharatiya Kisan Sangh and the Vishva Hindu Parishad, entrenched in the state after the decline of Ahmedabad's textile industry, and dropped Gordhan Zadafia from his cabinet. When the BKS staged a farmers' demonstration Modi ordered their eviction from state-provided houses and his decision to demolish 200 illegal temples in Gandhinagar deepened the rift with the VHP. Sang organizations were no longer consulted or informed in advance about Modi's administrative decisions. Nonetheless Modi retained connections with some Hindu nationalists. Modi wrote a foreword to a textbook by Dinanath Batra released in 2014, which stated that ancient India possessed technologies including test tube babies. Modi's relationship with Muslims continued to attract criticism. Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee distanced himself reaching out to North Indian Muslims before the 2000 and for Lok Sabha elections. After the elections Vajpayee called the violence in Gujarat a reason for the BJP's electoral defeat, and said it had been a mistake to leave Modi in office after the riots. Questions about Modi's relationship with Muslims were also raised by many Western nations. During his tenure as chief minister, Modi was barred from entering the United States by the State Department in accordance with the recommendations of the Commission on International Religious Freedom formed under the aegis of the International Religious Freedom Act the only person denied a US visa under this law. The UK and the European Union refused to admit him because of what they saw as his role in the riots. As Modi rose to prominence in India, the UK and the EU lifted their bans in October 2012 and March 2013 respectively. And after his election as Prime Minister he was invited to Washington during the run-up.
to the 2007 Assembly elections and the 2009 general election. The BJP intensified its rhetoric on terrorism. In July 2006, Modi criticized Prime Minister Manmohan Singh for his reluctance to revive anti-terror legislation such as the 2002 Prevention of Terrorism Act. He asked the national government to allow states to invoke tougher laws in the wake of the 2006 Mumbai train bombings. In 2007 Modi authored Karma Yoga 101-page booklet discussing manual scavenging. In it, Modi argued that scavenging was a spiritual experience for Dalits. However, this book was not circulated that time because of the election code of conduct. After the November 2008 Mumbai attacks, Modi held a meeting to discuss the security of Gujarat's 1,600 km long coastline, resulting in government authorization of 30 high speed surveillance boats. In July 2007, Modi completed 2,063 consecutive days as Chief Minister of Gujarat making him the longest-serving holder of the post, and the BJP won 122 of 182 state assembly seats in that year's election. Development projects As Chief Minister Modi favoured privatisation and small government which was at odds with the philosophy of the RSS usually described as anti-privatisation and anti-globalisation. His policies during his second term have been credited with reducing corruption in the state. He established financial and technology parks in Gujarat and, during the 2007 Vibrant Gujarat Summit, real estate investment deals worth 6.6 .6 trillion were signed. The governments led by Patel and Modi supported NGOs and communities in the creation of groundwater conservation projects. By December 2008 500,000 structures had been built of which 113,738 were check dams, which helped recharge the aquifers beneath them. 60 of the 112 tessels which had depleted the water table in 2004 had regained their normal groundwater levels by 2010. As a result, the state's production of genetically modified cotton increased to become the largest in India. The boom in cotton production and its semi-arid land use led to Gujarat's agricultural sector growing at an average rate of 9.6% from 2001 to 2007. Public irrigation measures in central and southern Gujarat such as the Sardasarovar Dam were less successful. The Sada Sarovar project only irrigated for 6% of the area intended. Nonetheless from 2001 to 2010 Gujarat recorded an agricultural growth rate of 10.97% the highest of any state. However, sociologists have pointed out that the growth rate under the 1992-97 Inc. government was 12.9%. In 2008 Modi offered land in Gujarat to Tata Motors to set up a plant manufacturing the nano after a popular agitation had forced the company to move out of West Bengal. Several other companies followed the Tatas to Gujarat. The Modi government finished the process of bringing electricity to every village in Gujarat that its predecessor had almost completed. Modi significantly changed the state's system of power distribution greatly impacting farmers. Gujarat expanded the Jyoti Gramyodana scheme in which agricultural electricity was separated from other rural electricity, the agricultural electricity was rationed to fit scheduled irrigation demands reducing its cost, although early protests by farmers ended when those who benefited found that their electricity supply had stabilized according to an assessment study corporations and large farmers benefited from the policy at the expense of small farmers and laborers. Development Debate 
There has been a contentious debate surrounding the development of the state of Gujarat during Modi's tenure as chief minister. The GDP growth rate of Gujarat averaged 10% during Modi's tenure, a value above that of the country as a whole, and similar to other highly industrialized states. Gujarat also had a high rate of economic growth in the 1990s before Modi took office. Some scholars have stated the rate of growth did not accelerate during Modi's tenure, although the state is considered to have maintained a high growth rate. During Modi's chief ministership, under Modi Gujarat topped the World Bank's ease of doing business rankings among Indian states for two consecutive years. In 2013, Gujarat was ranked first among Indian states for economic freedom by a report measuring governance growth, citizens' rights and labor, and business regulation among the country's 20 largest states. In the later years of Modi's government, Gujarat's economic growth was frequently used as an argument to counter allegations of communism. Tax breaks for businesses were easier to obtain in Gujarat than in other states, as was land. Modi's policies to make Gujarat attractive for investment included the creation of special economic zones, where labor laws were greatly weakened. Despite its growth rate, Gujarat had a relatively poor record on human development, poverty relief, nutrition and education. During Modi's tenure, in 2013 Gujarat ranked 13th in the country with respect to rates of poverty and 21st in education. Nearly 45% of children under 5 were underweight, and 23% were undernourished putting the state in the alarming category on the India State Hunger Index. A study by UNICEF and the Indian government found that Gujarat under Modi had a poor record with respect to immunization in children. Over the decade from 2001 to 2011, Gujarat did not change its position relative to the rest of the country with respect to poverty and female literacy remaining near the median of the 29 Indian states. It showed only a marginal improvement in rates of infant mortality and its position with respect to individual consumption declined. With respect to the quality of education in government schools, the state ranked below most Indian states. The social policies of the government generally did not benefit Muslims, Dalits and Adivasis, and generally increased social inequalities. Development in Gujarat was generally limited to the urban middle class and citizens in rural areas or from lower castes were increasingly marginalized. In 2013 the state ranked 10th of 21 Indian states in the Human Development Index. Political scientist Christoph Jaffrelot says that under Modi the number of families below the poverty line has increased and conditions for rural Adivasi and Dalits in particular have declined. Under Modi the state government spent far less than the national average on education and health care. In July 2013, economics Nobel laureate Amartya Sen expressed disapproval of Modi's governance record, saying that under his administration Gujarat's record in education and health care is pretty bad. However, economists Arvind Panagriya and Jagdish Bhagwati say that Gujarat's social indicators have improved from a lower baseline than that of other Indian states. According to them, Gujarat's performance in raising literacy rates has been superior to other states and the rapid improvement of health indicators is evidence that its progress has not been poor by any means. Final Years during the 2012 campaign Modi attempted to identify himself with the state of Gujarat, a strategy similar to that used by Indira Gandhi during the emergency, and projected himself as protecting Gujarat against persecution by the rest of India. Despite the BJP's shift away from explicit Hindutva Modi's election campaign in 2007, and 2012 contained elements of Hindu nationalism. 
Modi only attended Hindu religious ceremonies and had prominent associations with Hindu religious leaders. During his 2012 campaign he twice refused to wear articles of clothing gifted by Muslim leaders. He did however maintain relations with Dawoodi Bora. His campaign included references to issues known to cause religious polarization including to Afzal Guru and the killing of Surabuddin Sheikh. The BJP did not nominate in any Muslim candidates for the assembly election of 2012. He had published a Gujarati book titled Jyoti Panj in 2008, containing profiles of various RSS leaders. The longest was of M.S. Goldwalker, under whose leadership the RSS expanded and whom Modi refers to as Pujniya Sri Guruji. According to the Economic Times, his intention was to explain the workings of the RSS to his readers and to reassure RSS members that he remained ideologically aligned with them. Modi authored eight other books mostly containing short stories for children. While campaigning for the 2012 assembly elections Modi made extensive use of holograms and other technologies allowing him to reach a large number of people, something he would repeat in the 2014 general election. In the 2012 Gujarat Legislative Assembly elections Modi won the constituency of Maninagar by 86,373 votes over Shveta Bhatt being candidate and wife of Sanjeev Bhatt. The BJP won 115 of the 182 seats continuing its majority during his tenure and allowing the party to form the government. In later by-elections the BJP won four more assembly seats and two Lok Sabha seats held by the Inc. Although Modi did not campaign for its candidates in 2013, the Wharton India Economic Forum at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania cancelled a keynote video conference speech by Modi following protests by Indian Americans. After his election as Prime Minister, Modi resigned as the Chief Minister and as an MLA from Maninagar on 21 May 2014. Anand Ibn Patel succeeded him as the Chief Minister. 2014 Indian General Election in September 2013 Modi was named the BJP's candidate for Prime Minister in the 2014 Lok Sabha election. Several BJP leaders expressed opposition to Modi's candidature including BJP founding member LK Advani who cited concern with leaders who were concerned with their personal agendas. Modi played a dominant role in the BJP's election campaign. Several people who voted for the BJP stated that if Modi had not been the prime ministerial candidate they would have voted for or another party. The focus on Modi as an individual was unusual for a BJP election campaign. The election was described as a referendum on Narendra Modi. During the campaign, Modi focused on the corruption scandals under the previous Inc. government and played on his image as a politician who had created a high rate of GDP growth in Gujarat. Modi projected himself as a person who could bring about development, without focus on any specific policies. His message found support among young Indians, and among middle-class citizens. The BJP under Modi was able to downplay concerns about the protection of religious minorities and Modi's commitment to secularism areas in which he had previously received criticism. Prior to the election Modus image in the media had centered around his role in the 2002 Gujarat riots. But during the campaign the BJP was able to shift this to a focus on Modus neoliberal ideology and the Gujarat model of development. Although the BJP avoided issues of Hindu nationalism, to an extent Hindutva remained a significant part of its campaign. The BJP's campaign was assisted by its wide influence in the media. Modi's campaign blitz cost approximately and received extensive financial support from corporate donors.
In addition to more conventional campaign methods, Modi made extensive use of social media and address more than 1,000 rallies via hologram appearances. The BJP won 31% of the vote and more then doubled its tally in the Lok Sabha to 282 becoming the first party to win a majority of seats on its own since 1984. Voter dissatisfaction with the Inc as well as with regional parties in North India was another reason for the success of the BJP, as was the support from the RSS in states such as Uttar Pradesh in which the BJP performed well. It drew exceptionally high support from upper-caste Hindus. Although the 10% of Muslim votes won was more than it had won before, it performed particularly well in parts of the country that had recently experienced violence between Hindus and Muslims. The magnitude of the BJP's victory led many commentators to say that the election constituted a political realignment away from progressive parties and towards the right wing. Modi's tweet announcing his victory was described as being emblematic of the political realignment away from a secular socialist state towards capitalism and Hindu cultural nationalism. Modi himself was a candidate for the Lok Sabha in two constituencies, Varanasi and Vadodara. He won in both constituencies, defeating Ahmadmi Party leader Arvind Kedri will in Varanasi and Madhur Sudan Mystery of the Inc. in Vadodara by votes. Modi, who was unanimously elected leader of the BJP, was appointed Prime Minister by India's President. To comply with a law that an MP cannot represent more than one constituency, he vacated the Vadodara seat. Prime Minister Modi was sworn in as the Prime Minister of India on 26 May 2014 at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. He became the first Prime Minister born after India's independence from the British Empire. His first cabinet consisted of 45 ministers, 25 fewer than the previous United Progressive Alliance government. 21 new ministers were added to the Council of Ministers in November 2014. Economic Policies The economic policies of Modi's government focused on privatization and liberalization of the economy based on a neoliberal framework. Modi liberalized India's foreign direct investment policies, allowing more foreign investment in several industries including in defense and the railways. Other reforms included removing many of the country's labor laws to make it harder for workers to form unions and easier for employers to hire and fire them. These reforms met with support from institutions such as the World Bank but opposition from scholars within the country. The labor laws also drew strong opposition from unions. On 2 September 2015, 11 of the country's largest unions went on strike including one affiliated with the BJP. The Bharatiya Mazdor sang a constituent of the Sang Parivar stated that the reforms would hurt laborers by making it easier for corporations to exploit them. In his first budget, Finance Minister Aaron Jaitley promised to gradually reduce the budgetary deficit from 4.1% to 3% over two years and to divest from shares in public banks. Over Moda's first year in office, the Indian GDP grew at a rate of 7.5%, making it the world's fastest growing large economy. The funds dedicated to poverty reduction programs and social welfare measures were greatly decreased by the Modi administration. The money spent on social programs declined from 14.6% of GDP during the Congress government to 12.6% during Modi's first year in office. Spending on health and family welfare declined by 15% and on primary and secondary education by 16%. The budgetary allocation for the Sava Shiksha Rapiana the Education for All program declined by 22%. 
The government also lowered corporate taxes, abolished the wealth tax, and reduced customs duties on gold jewelry and increased sales taxes. In October 2014, the Modi government deregulated diesel prices and later increased taxes on diesel and petrol. In September 2014 Modi introduced the Make in India initiative to encourage foreign companies to manufacture products in India, with the goal of turning the country into a global manufacturing hub. Supporters of economic liberalization supported the initiative, while critics argued it would allow foreign corporations to capture a greater share of the Indian market, in order to enable the construction of private industrial corridors. The Modi administration passed a land reform bill that allowed it to acquire private agricultural land without conducting a social impact assessment and without the consent of the farmers who owned it. Under the previous bill, the government had required the consent of 80% of the owners of a piece of property before acquiring it for a private project, this requirement was waived. The bill was passed via an executive order after it faced opposition in parliament, but was eventually allowed to lapse. Modi's government put in place the goods and services tax, the biggest tax reform in the country since independence. It subsumed around 17 different taxes, and became effective from 1 July 2017. On 25 June 2015 Modi launched a program intended to develop 100 smart cities. The smart cities program is expected to bring information technology companies an extra benefit of. In June 2015 Modi launched the Housing for All by 2022 project which intends to eliminate slums in India by building about 20 million affordable homes for India's urban poor. In his first cabinet decision Modi set up a team to investigate black money. On 9 November 2016, the government demonetized 500 rupees and 1,000 rupees banknotes, with the stated intention of curbing corruption, black money, the use of counterfeit currency, and terrorism. The move led to widespread protests throughout the country including one by opposition parties which stalled the winter session of parliament. In the days following the demonetization banks across the country faced severe cash shortages, which had detrimental effects on a number of small businesses on agriculture and on transportation. People seeking to exchange their notes had lengthy waits, and several deaths were linked to the rush to exchange cash. Following Modus' announcement, the Indian stock indices BSE, Sensex and Nifty 50 declined steeply. There has been a steep increase in digital payments and transactions in the country since the day demonetization was announced. Post the demonetization, the quantum of income tax returns filed for individuals jumped by 25% indicating the widened tax net. Further the advance tax collections rose by 42%, and self-assessment tax collections rose by 34.25%. Health and Sanitation Policies In his first year as Prime Minister Modi reduced the amount of money spent by the government on health care. The Modi government launched a new health policy in January 2015 although this did not increase the government's spending on health care, instead emphasizing the role of private health care organizations. This represented a shift away from the policy of the previous Congress government which had supported programs to assist public health goals including reducing child and maternal mortality rates. The National Health Mission, which included public health programs targeted at these indices, received nearly 25% less funds in 2015 than in the previous year. Fifteen national health programs, including those aimed at controlling tobacco use and supporting health care for the elderly, were merged with the National Health Mission and received less funds than in previous years. 
Modi initially appointed Harsh Vardhan a doctor, and an advocate of tobacco control as Minister of Health. However, Vardhan was removed in November 2015. The government introduced stricter packaging laws for tobacco which requires 85% of the packet size to be covered by pictorial warnings. In its budget for the second year after it took office, the Modi government reduced healthcare spending by 15%. Modi has generally emphasized his government's efforts at sanitation as a means of ensuring good health. An article in the medical journal Lancet stated that the country might have taken a few steps back in public health under Modi. On 2 October 2014, Modi launched the Swak Bharat Abhiyan campaign. The stated goals of the campaign included eliminating open defecation and manual scavenging. The plan was to achieve these aims in five years. As part of the program, the Indian government began constructing millions of toilets in rural areas and encouraging people to use them. The government also announced plans to build new sewage treatment plants. The administration plans to construct 60 million toilets by 2019. The construction projects have faced allegations of corruption and have faced severe difficulty in getting people to use the toilets constructed for them. Hindutva and Education Policy during the 2014 election campaign the BJP sought to identify itself with political leaders known to have opposed Hindu nationalism including B. R. Ambedkar Subhas Chandra Bose and Ram Manohar Lohia. The campaign also saw the use of rhetoric based on Hindutva however, by BJP leaders in certain states. Communal tensions were played upon especially in Uttar Pradesh and the states of northeast India. A proposal for the controversial Uniform Civil Code was a part of the BJP's election manifesto. Several state governments headed by the BJP have enacted policies aligned with Hindutva after the election of Modi as Prime Minister. The government of Maharashtra banned the killing of cows in 2014. The Modi administration has generally avoided directly supporting policies related to a Hindutva agenda. There has been an increase in the activities of a number of other Hindu nationalist organizations, sometimes with the support of the government. The incidents included a Hindu religious conversion program, a campaign against the alleged Islamic practice of love jihad and attempts to celebrate Nutu Ram Godsa, the assassin of Mahatma Gandhi, by members of the right-wing Hindu Mahasabha. The attempts at religious conversion have been described by the VHP and other organizations involved with them as attempts at reconversion from Islam or Christianity. There have been a number of reports of intimidation or coercion of the subjects during these attempts. Officials in the government, including the Home Minister, have defended the attempts. There were additional incidents of violence targeted at religious minorities by Hindu nationalists. Modi refused to remove a government minister from her position after a popular outcry resulted from her referring to religious minorities as bastards. Commentators have suggested, however, that the violence was perpetrated by radical Hindu nationalists to undercut the authority of Modi. The Modi administration appointed Yelapragad Asudashan Rao who had previously been associated with the RSS chairperson of the Indian Council of Historical Research. In reaction to his appointment other historians and former members of the ICHR including those sympathetic to the ruling party questioned his credentials as a historian. Several stated that the appointment was part of an agenda of cultural nationalism. The government began formulating a new education policy in EP soon after its election. As of March 2016 this policy had yet to be implemented. This was the third education policy introduced by the Indian government following those of 1968 and 1986. 
The policy was described as having overtones of Hindutva. The RSS had a role in its creation and it did not explicitly mention the goals of socialism, secularism and democracy that had been mentioned in the first two policies. The policy emphasized the education of minority students, as well as those of economically backward groups, in particular on them proving enrollment in schools among those groups. The policy proposed bringing religious educational institutions under the Right to Education Act. There was also a debate about removing caste-based reservation in favor of reservation based on income a move supported by the RSS, but which was criticized as being discriminatory on the basis of caste. Foreign policy Foreign policy played a relatively small role in Modi's election campaign, and did not feature prominently in the BJP's election manifesto. Modi invited all the other leaders of Sark countries to his swearing-in ceremony as Prime Minister. He was the first Indian Prime Minister to do so. Modi's foreign policy similarly to that of the preceding Inc. government focused on improving economic ties, security and regional relations. Modi continued Manmohan Singh's policy of multi-alignment. The Modi administration tried to attract foreign investment in the Indian economy from several sources, especially in East Asia, with the use of slogans such as Make in India and Digital India. As a part of this policy, the Modi government completed India's application to join the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which is led by China and Russia. The government also tried to improve relations with Islamic nations in the Middle East such as Bahrain, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates as well as with Israel. Modi added five bilateral strategic partnerships to the 25 that had been agreed by his predecessors Singh and Vajpayee. During the first few months after the election, Modi made trips to a number of different countries to further the goals of his policy, and attended the BRICS ASEAN and G20 summits. One of Modi's first visits as Prime Minister was to Nepal during which he promised a billion USD in aid. Modi also made several overtures to the United States including multiple visits to that country. While this was described as an unexpected development due to the U.S. having previously denied Modi a travel visa over his role during the 2002 Gujarat riots, it was also expected to strengthen diplomatic and trade relations between the two countries. In 2015 the Indian Parliament ratified a land exchange deal with Bangladesh about the India-Bangladesh enclaves which had been initiated by the government of Manmohan Singh. Modus administration gave renewed attention to India's Look East policy instituted in 1991. The policy was renamed the Act East policy and involved directing Indian foreign policy towards East Asia and Southeast Asia. The government signed agreements to improve land connectivity with Myanmar through the state of Manipur. This represented a break with India's historic engagement with Myanmar which prioritized border security over trade. As of July 2016 Modi had made 51 trips to 42 countries with the intent of strengthening diplomatic relations. Defense policy The BJP election manifesto had also promised to deal with illegal immigration into India in the Northeast as well as to be more firm in its handling of insurgent groups. During the election campaign, Modi said that he would be willing to accommodate Hindu migrants who were being persecuted in Bangladesh but those that came with political objectives would have to be sent back. The Modi government issued a notification allowing Hindu, Sikh and Buddhist illegal immigrants from Pakistan and Bangladesh to legalize their residency in India. The government described the measure as being taken for humanitarian reasons but it drew criticism from several Assamese organizations. 
Modi continued the previous Inc. administration's policy of increasing military spending every year, announcing an increase of 11% in the military budget in 2015. This increase was larger than the average growth under the Congress. The Modi administration negotiated a peace agreement with the largest faction of the National Socialist Council of Nagaland, which was announced in August 2015. The Naga insurgency in northwest India had begun in the 1950s. The NSCM and the government had agreed to a ceasefire in 1997. But a peace accord had not previously been signed. In 2015 the government abrogated a 15-year ceasefire with the Kaplang faction of the NSCM. The NSCMK responded with a series of attacks which killed 18 people. The Modi government carried out a raid across the border with Myanmar as a result, and labelled the NSCMK a terrorist organisation. Modi has repeatedly stated that Pakistan was an exporter of terrorism. On 29 September 2016, the Indian Army stated that it had conducted a surgical strike on terror launch pads in Azad Kashmir. Although Pakistan denied the claim and the details of the confrontation are still in dispute. Environmental Policies in naming his cabinet, Modi renamed the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change. In the first budget of the government, the money allotted to this ministry was reduced by more than 50%. The new ministry also removed or diluted a number of laws related to environmental protection. These included no longer requiring clearance from the National Board for Wildlife for projects close to protected areas and allowing certain projects to proceed before environmental clearance was received. The government also tried to reconstitute the wildlife board such that it no longer had representatives from non-governmental organizations. However, this move was prevented by the Supreme Court. Modi also relaxed or abolished a number of other environmental regulations particularly those related to industrial activity. A government committee stated that the existing system only served to create corruption, and that the government should instead rely on the owners of industries to voluntarily inform the government about the pollution they were creating. Other changes included reducing ministry oversight on small mining projects and no longer requiring approval from tribal councils for projects inside forested areas. In addition, Modi lifted a moratorium on new industrial activity in the most polluted areas in the countries. The changes were welcomed by business people but criticized by environmentalists. Under the UPA government that preceded Modi's administration, Field trials of genetically modified crops had essentially been put on hold after protests from farmers fearing for their livelihoods. Under the Modi government these restrictions were gradually lifted. The government received some criticism for freezing the bank accounts of environmental group Greenpeace citing financial irregularities. Although a leaked government report said that the freeze had to do with Greenpeace's opposition to GM crops, governance and other initiatives. Modi's first year as Prime Minister saw significant centralization of power relative to previous administrations. Modi's efforts at centralization have been linked to an increase in the number of senior administration officials resigning their positions. Although the government has a majority of seats in the Lok Sabha, it does not have one in the Raja Sabha which led to its policies frequently being stymied there. Thus Modi resorted to passing a number of ordinances to enact his policies leading to further centralization of power. The government also passed a bill increasing the control that it had over the appointment of judges and reducing that of the judiciary. On 31 December 2014, Modi announced that the planning commission had been scrapped.
It was replaced with a body called the National Institution for Transforming India and ITAAYOG. The Planning Commission was a legacy of the Indian independence movement. Although critics said that it was slowing economic growth, the move had the effect of greatly centralizing the power previously, with the Planning Commission in the person of the Prime Minister. It also reduced the extent of control individual states had over their financial allocation from the Union government and unlike the Planning Commission it does not have the power to allocate funds. The Planning Commission had received heavy criticism in previous years for creating inefficiency in the government and of not filling its role of improving social welfare. However, since the economic liberalization of the 1990s it had been the major government body responsible for measures related to social justice. The Modi government launched a crackdown against a number of civil society organizations. Several tens of thousands of organizations were investigated by the Intelligence Bureau in the first year of the administration, on the grounds that they were slowing economic growth. International humanitarian aid organization Medecins Sans Frontiers was among the groups that were put under pressure. Other organizations affected included the Sierra Club and Avaz. Cases of sedition were filed against individuals criticizing the government. This led to discontent within the BJP regarding Moda's style of functioning and drew comparisons to the governing style of Indira Gandhi. Modi repealed 1,200 obsolete laws in first three years as Prime Minister. Against a total of 1,301 such laws repealed by previous governments over a span of 64 years, he started a monthly radio program titled Man Ki Baat on 3 October 2014. Modi also launched the Digital India program which has the goal of ensuring that government services are available electronically, building infrastructure to provide high-speed internet access to rural areas, boosting manufacturing of electronic goods in the country and promoting digital literacy, personal life and image. In accordance with Gandhi tradition Modi's marriage was arranged by his parents when he was a child. He was engaged at age 13 to Jasho de Ben marrying her when he was 18. They spent little time together and grew apart when Modi began two years of travel, including visits to Hindu ashrams. Reportedly their marriage was never consummated, and he kept it a secret, because otherwise he could not have become a Prachvara in the Puritan Rashtriya Swayamswak. Sang. Although Modi kept his marriage secret for most of his career he acknowledged his wife when he filed his nomination for a parliamentary seat in the 2014 general elections. Modi maintains a close relationship with his mother Hira Ben and often visits her on his birthday to seek her blessings. A vegetarian Modi has a frugal lifestyle and is a workaholic, an introvert. Adept at using social media he has been, since September 2014 the second most followed leader in the world behind Barack Obama and Donald Trump. Modis the 31st of August 2012 post on Google Hangouts made him the first Indian politician to interact with netizens on live chat. Modi has also been called a fashion icon for his signature crisply ironed half-sleeved kurta as well as for a suit, with his name embroidered repeatedly in the pinstripes that he wore during a state visit by U.S. President Barack Obama which drew public and media attention and criticism. Mo, this personality has been variously described by scholars and biographers as energetic, arrogant, and charismatic. The nomination of Modi for the Prime Ministership drew attention to his reputation as one of contemporary India's most controversial and divisive politicians. During the 2014 election campaign the BJP projected an image of Modi as a strong masculine leader, who would be able to take difficult decisions.
campaigns in which he has participated have focused on Modi as an individual in a manner unusual for the BJP and RSS. Modi has relied upon his reputation as a politician able to bring about economic growth and development. Nonetheless, his role in the 2002 Gujarat riots continues to attract criticism and controversy. Modi's hardline Hindutva philosophy and the policies adopted by his government continue to draw criticism and have been seen as evidence of a majoritarian and exclusionary social agenda. As Prime Minister Modi has received consistently high approval ratings. At the end of his first year in office, he received an overall approval rating of 87% in a Pew Research poll with 68% of people rating him very favorably and 93% approving of his government. His approval rating remained largely consistent at around 74% through his second year in office, according to a nationwide poll conducted by Instivani. At the end of his second year in office, an updated Pew Research poll showed Modi continued to receive high overall approval ratings of 81%, with 57% of those polled rating him very favorably. At the end of his third year in office, the Times of India poll showed that 77% of the respondents rated him as very good and good. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?